SMD Law is the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Check them out on the interwebs at smdalaw.com or at 866-529-3537. No matter where you are in the state of Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, it doesn't matter. They have an office near you. So whether you need to send a letter to an annoying neighbor, or you're a criminal and you need defense, maybe you just have problems with elder law. Check them out, smdalaw.com today. The official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Call them first. Then you act. I mean, certainly Michigan State just uh, brought the fight to us tonight. You know, we uh, thought we got off to a decent start offensively in the game, but I never thought we adjusted uh, defensively to their physicality, uh, to their speed. Uh, you can simulate it in practice. We do have a lot of new guys, you know, a number of freshmen that haven't played here, that haven't played against them, a couple of transfers. Uh, you try to simulate what they do, and it's uh, it's impossible in practice. So. Um, Give them credit. I mean, obviously, Winston and Ward are playing at an incredibly high level. They have all year. And I thought Michigan State played with great energy. And, you know, we finally were the one. I thought both teams were kind of scoring early. And either team was really stopping each other. And then uh, and then they, they tightened up the screws defensively on us. We got in really serious foul trouble. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. Their physical team puts a lot of pressure on the officials, um, you know, with, with the way they post and the way they drive the ball. And, I had three of my starters getting in heavy foul trouble, which I thought really affected the game as well. So uh, we got to learn from it. We got to get better. Uh, we got to got to move on. It's a long season of Big Ten basketball, and you know one of the things about it is you got to pick yourself up, learn from what happened, and you got to get ready for the next game. Chris over here, please. Two questions. First, you have a very good basketball team. How much tonight was Michigan State being a very good top ten team, and maybe or maybe you guys not having your best night? Yeah, I think it's always both. You know, I think a lot of times as a coach, you always think about the things you didn't do, and you get disappointed. But you also have to understand you're playing against a really good team that that make you do some things poorly at times. And I thought the speed with which they play had us on our heels a little bit, and you know their ability to get the ball inside. I mean, it was a huge point of emphasis for us. But in that first half, I just thought they did a great job of getting really deep position, you know, being able to establish the paint, whether it was with layups, uh, with the post ups, or in transition, their pitch aheads, you know, which, which set the tone and got us in foul trouble. So um, I think a little bit of both. It wasn't our finest hour, but I think also a lot of it has to do with how good Michigan State is, and, and especially here on this home floor, it's a, it's a very difficult place to play. And secondly, I know it's early January, but. Through the eye test and watching them and scouting them on film, how, how good is this Spartan team in your Yeah, mind? they're very good. I think what makes them good is, you know, they understand who they, their roles. You know, they have a terrific point guard in Cassius. Uh, they have a dominant big man in Ward. And then all those other guys do what they do really well. They star in their roles. I mean, I'm a big fan of Goins. You know, I think what he brings to the team, you know, you guys who cover them, you know, probably give him the praise he deserves, but he's, he's really a glue guy. He can pass, he rebounds, he's a facilitary, facilitator, can make a shot. You have veteran wings with McQuaid, Ahrens, uh, and Langford when he's healthy. You know, Tillman's really emerged as a, as a really good option for them off the bench. They're developing their young kids. So, I mean, they have all the pieces. When you have a, when you have a veteran point guard who's elite, when you have a dominant big man, and then you have veterans around them that know what they're supposed to do and a team that's connected and as well coached as they are, then they can play with anybody in the country. No doubt in my mind on that. Prisoner, you were you called a couple of early timeouts there in the second half. How much of that was dependent on what their break was doing? It seemed like they were getting out and running in transition. Yeah, most of those in the second half was frustration because it was just flat out breakdowns on our part. And give them credit. Like we we gave up a pitch ahead three off of a free throw, off of a made free throw of ours out of a timeout. So I mean that was that was just you know frustration on my part you know just just breakdowns you can't have against a really good team um, you know early in the second half again you know you, when you play on the road sometimes you you got to be careful you can get caught with your timeouts in your pocket and they go on these big runs you got to use them to try to to stop the bleeding so we had to use a couple in the first half and then a couple there early in the second half but the ones in the second half are just in my opinion were just flat out breakdowns on our part. Coach, uh, Nick Ward uh, in the first half, what made him so tough to stop? Well, he's, he's a terrific player. I mean, he's gotten himself in unbelievable shape. Uh, he's strong. He's got great, great moves down in the low post. He does a really good job of getting really deep position. And he's difficult to play against. He's unorthodox, but in, I say that in a positive way. You know, he, 
he puts a lot of pressure on the officials because there's a lot of contact, you know, and, and it's, it's in a good way. I mean that complimentary. There's a lot of arm movement. There's a lot of body banging. And, you know, he gets, he gets them in the bonus early. You know, he got our big guys in serious foul trouble. And then what happens is because of it, he's able to get really deep position. And as good as he is, when he gets it that deep, I mean, you can try to send help. You can try to get, but when you get it that deep, there's not a whole lot you can do. But I think he's worked really hard. You know, his body, he's engaged. He's, he's a terrific player and a really tough guy to prepare for. Chris, you played him one-on-one -on -one a lot in the first half. And that obviously he had 21 points in the first half. What is sort of when you're trying to decide if you're going to double him, which some people have done effectively, yeah. you don't have great length in the post. Like what? What goes into that decision when you're facing this particular team? Yeah, you have to just, anytime you play a really good team, you got to try to decide, okay, what, what are we going to live with? You know, do we, you know, and the first thing you got to try to do is get back in transition, which we didn't do. You know, and you got to try to make them more of a half court team, which we weren't able to do all night. They were able to run their break and get us on our heels with that. Then you got to decide, okay, do you want to send the house at Ward and then open up their shooters? So then if you do that, you're going to give up open shots, which some people might live with. You know, one of the things that's been good for us is our ability to defend the three-point line. You know, and so coming into the game, we wanted – it wasn't that we wanted to give no help. We wanted to give some help. But we made the decision coming in not to send the doubles to try to eliminate some of their shooters and some of their threes. And then as the game went along, we started bringing more help because he was in such a rhythm and we were in a lot of foul trouble with our bigs. What do you say or do to uh, keep your guys' confidence up after playing, you know, a couple good Big Ten teams tough and then getting routed to that? Yeah, no, you got to – I mean, that's the resiliency you have to have. I mean, the, things like this happen in the course of a Big Ten season. When you play 20 games against really good teams, um, you know, the, the, the teams that are going to come out of this thing are the ones that are going to be able to bounce back from games like this, you know, where you kind of get, get it handed to you. You know, there's no other way to sugarcoat it. You know, we, we got outplayed in every way tonight. Um, and we got to get home. You know, we have a, a home game this weekend. We got a couple days to get ready for, and you got to stop the bleeding. You know, that's – we got we to gotta find a way, anyhow we can, to, to put 40 minutes together in our next game to try to get a win and, and get ourselves back on track. Hopefully we're angry. I mean, when, whenever, you know, I'm a part of something where you get beat like that, you know, there's – you get knocked back initially, but then there's got to be a little bit of anger too. Like it's not it's not fun to get beat like that. So you got to turn that emotion into controlled anger as you get ready for your next game, and, and hopefully that's what we'll do as we get ready for this weekend. Anything else? Thanks, coach. All right, thank, thank you guys. You. Thanks.